Arab is not going to invade Jerusalem. Um, that night, was 186,000 Assyrian soldiers were killed. They died that night. Sennacherib takes the remainder of his army, goes back to uh, Assyria, and writes this uh, obelisk saying how he had caged in Hezekiah in Jerusalem. But he never captured Jerusalem. Otherwise, he would have said it. He also puts a date on here. And the Assyrian chronology is the most recognized chronology throughout the Middle East. And it's the only one that we have in order to compare other chronologies to. Uh, they got Limu list and Emu list of the various kings and governors of the Assyrians from about 972 uh, BC all the way down to the Babylonian kings and, and then um, oh I forgot his name um, Ptolemy takes it from the Babylonian kings all the way down to uh, about 160 common era hmm. so we have this uh, chronology that all leading authorities in, in history recognize as being accurate and on top of that Ptolemy also has 80 um, astronomical um, events that take place that NASA has been able to duplicate and prove when these years were. So we know this chronology is correct. But the Hebrews never had anything that uh, they left to us that we could recognize in history, except for two dates. The Battle of Karkar in 853 B.C., and where Ahaz is killed, because that ties into the Assyrian chronology. And the other date is this one where Sennacherib comes against Hezekiah. And this is an undisputed date. It's 701 B.C. So 701 B.C. is the, the year that they can eat what grows of itself. And the next year, what grows of the same is the 50th year. That's the only time you have a a two sabbatical years back to back. It's the 49th and 50th year. Yeah. So 701 BC, then because it's going lower, coming down to zero, right, Krista? <laughs> right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so at 700 is the Jubilee year. So now we have those two dates matching up to a known chronology, the Assyrian chronology. And we know those dates, and that's a benchmark date in our, our reference of this, because from that we can now go forward and backward and find every sabbatical and jubilee year throughout history. So we have other dates that are given to us in history. Uh, another one in your Bible is Nehemiah 8.18, 1 Maccabees 16.14, and Josephus in his Antiquities. First Maccabees, again, is a, another, or well, I better give you the years for this. So Nehemiah 8.18 is 456 B.C. 456 B.C. Then we have a story in First Maccabees, 162 B.C. Another story in First Maccabees of 134 B.C. We have Julius Caesar, a record of Julius Caesar, um, not charging taxes to the Jews in a sabbatical year, which was 43 B.C. We have Josephus, uh, Antiquities, talking about 36 B.C., a sabbatical year. Again, 22 B.C., 42 Common Era. Uh, again, Joseph, Antiquities, 56 Common Era. And this is a, a, a note um, of somebody being indebted to somebody and they mentioned the sabbatical year and they mentioned the time of Nero. So that we were able to, to coordinate all those dates to find this one of 56 BC. We have the sabbatical year of when the temple was destroyed in 70 common era. Then we have two contracts, um, again, referencing the sabbatical year during the Bar Kopa revolt in 133 common era and 140 common era. And when you line these all up and count by seven from 701 BC, each and every one of those years I just gave you all match. So that tells you something. We go to ex, uh, no, Exodus. Yes, Exodus, I believe, 21. And I don't know what verse. 
So Exodus 21, Jehovah is comparing the seventh day Sabbath to the seventh year sabbatical year. And it's every seven days is a Sabbath. Every seven days. No matter how many holy days are in there, every seventh day will always be the Sabbath. In the sabbatical years, every seventh year is a sabbatical year. And there's no break. There's always seven. It's never eight. It's never six. It's always seven. And he compares the Sabbath to the sabbatical year in Exodus 21. So that's a great find. But this Jubilee year, this Jubilee year of 700 uh, B.C., which we get from 2 Kings 19.29, a lot of people struggle with this, and they think that you have to count by 50. So we have this modern concept of the six days of man, and that's 6,000 uh, years. So they take 120 times 50 to get to 6,000 years. Where do they get the 120 from? They get the 120 from Genesis 6 3. Yeah. In Genesis 6 3, it says, uh, well, why don't we go there and read it? Chris, how quick are you? You got that? It's pretty quick. I, okay. Her thumbs, are, six, her thumbs three. are moving right now. We're there. Okay. Then Yehovah said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his day shall be 120 years. Okay, so how many people do you know live to be 120? I know uh, no one. <laughs> I have some of my ancestry used to, uh, the longest they lived was 104. Wow. I'm aiming for 150 myself, and just in <laughs> case I come up short a little bit. But uh, so people try and average that out with the, the, the people before the flood. You know, Noah, uh, Adam was 930. Um, others were different years. Maybe that's, but that it, you can't figure it out. You can't do it. The word for years here in Genesis 6 3 is the word Shana. And Shana means cycles of time. So it's 120 cycles of time. That could be 120 months, 120 days, 120 years, which is what most Bibles say, or it can be 120 Jubilee cycles. And people assume that that's what it can mean, and then they go 120 times 50 to get 6,000 years for the six days of man. Hmm. Okay. But it's uh, 120 times 49 because it's every seven days. How do we know this? Because we have the Feast of Pentecost every year. The Feast of Pentecost shows us it's a direct relation to the, the Jubilee cycle. In Leviticus 23, it tells you how to count the, to the Feast of Pentecost. You count seven Sabbaths. After the seventh Sabbath, the day after the seventh Sabbath, is the 50th day. That's called Pentecost Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Sadly, then many, people, you, many people, you know, deny that. They don't, uh, they don't recognize that and they observe Shavuot, you know, not according to that, that specific instruction the day after the seventh Sabbath, which is such a gem to give us a perfect idea of how to count sabbatical and jubilee cycles. It is. It's, it's, it's right there. It's the day after the seventh Sabbath. Not three days after, not four days after. It's the day after. And that's always going to be on a Sunday because the Sabbath is always Saturday. So when you do uh, take that verse there, I think it's, I forget what it is, Leviticus 10, I think it is. And you go to Leviticus 25, it reads the exact same way for the sabbatical and jubilee years. After seven sabbatical years, right? That's 49 years. The year after is the Jubilee year. Hmm. Yeah. So it, the the first day of the week is the 50th day of Pentecost. So the first year in the sabbatical cycle is also the 50th year in the Jubilee cycle. So 50 and 1 are the same one. So we only have two Jubilee years mentioned in the entire Bible. 2 Kings 19.29 and... Leviticus 25.2, the year that 
Joshua enters the promised land is going to be a jubilee year. It's the first year. Yep. So now we have to reckon those two dates together and we begin to do our chronology and we have to do some math and I know how some people get all upset about math, but <laughs> it's done very simply here. And we show people how to do the chronology from Adam up until the year that Joshua enters the promised land. And that year turns out to be 2,500 years after the creation of Adam. Well, we're doing after the creation of Adam years, and then we have to coordinate that with our common era and BC years. And it gets a little dicey here, a little complicated for some people. It's actually very simple. It's just a math equation. And they all have to add up to 5,880, which is 120 times 49. So it must add up to that total amount of time. We explain this in the book. I'm not going to try and do it on the radio because people are their brains will go mush and then just ah. I, I want to I wanted to reiterate just one thing there though. You know the the times 49 versus times 50. Uh, you know what you're saying is you count to 49 and then you start over with the count. Year 50 is year one because I think that that is a a major catch at least at least for people that I know that that's hard it's a hard concept for some reason I don't know why but but just to reiterate you know we're, we're counting to 49 just like in the week you know you have day one two three four five six seven you don't have day eight you have day one uh, and it's the same concept of sabbatical and jubilee uh, cycles you count to 49 and then you have year one which is a jubilee year so that that's right it's you know and the proof is in these dates that we gave you so if 701 BC is the 49th year and 700 BC is a jubilee year, let's say you count by 50 and then you go 49, 50, then you count one. Okay. Let's just say that's the proper way to do it. So here's the test. When you count from 700 BC, so 699 BC would be the year one and you'd have to then go to the next date of 456 BC, and it must line up. But when you count from by 50s, it doesn't work. It doesn't work for 162 BC or 134, 43, or 36, or 22 BC. None of those years line up, yet we know that all those years are sabbatical years because of history. Huh. Uh, 42 common era, 56, 70, 133, and 140 common era, None of them line up with the 700 BC Jubilee year when you count by 50s. So, you know, you count by 50 and you'll get a Jubilee year close to those ones. So then you got to count forward and back by, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It just doesn't work. Not one of them. But when you count from 701 BC by sevens, they all line up. And that tells you that it's going by sevens every single time. And it tells you that the 50th year must be the first year. Yeah. Okay? So we, you know, I presented this in Tennessee to a, a large group down there for Sukkot in 2013. And one of the people in the audience had just come back from Israel, and they had pictures of uh, tombstones that they found in the, uh, the Israeli museum. And I actually went there... Uh, this um, a year ago Passover, and I found those uh, tombstones from the, these are tombstones from the Dead Sea. These are in the years uh, about 300 to the year about 515 Common Era. So he told me about it as I was speaking, taking questions and answers, and he said, "Does it line up?" And so you know, here's the big test. Is this tombstone, which marks the date of the person that died, according to the sabbatical year, what year it was in that sabbatical cycle, and how many years after the destruction of the temple, which was destroyed in the sabbatical year, that's how they reckon time. So I took the chance, and in front of the whole audience, we read what this tombstone said, we did the calculations, and sure enough, it lined up with what we were saying. And then since then, since 2000 and the fall of 2013, we have found eight more tombstones wow. marking the dates according to the sabbatical year 
uh, all around the Dead Sea there, 